Welcome to the Bora Library Glowforge tutorial, just a quick intro to our new Makerspace edition. This is where the Glowforge laser cutter lives. You'll find its connected filter on the floor and a computer you can use to set up your designs right next to it. Right above it, you'll find laser safe cutting material, a place to store smaller scrap pieces, digital calipers for exact measurements, and a fire blanket in case the laser ignites your cutting material. This is just a precaution and probably won't happen. You can make a ton of amazing things with this and cut all kinds of materials, but we'll probably start you off with cardboard while you're learning. Now that you know your way around the space, I'm going to take you through a print beginning to end. Everything is controlled from the online Glowforge app. This is the dashboard. Open or create a new design to get started. I'm creating this teaching tool to show the three capabilities of the Glowforge. The Glowforge can cut, which cuts all the way through the material, score, which draws a continuous line on the surface of the material, or engrave, which cuts the material but not all the way through. You'll notice that the Glowforge has read the QR code on my cutting material and correctly identified it. You can see the material and make any changes to it in the top left corner. Changing the material will also change the default speed and power settings for the Glowforge's three actions. This is also where you would enter the material height for any, anything without a QR co code, like cardboard. Check with a librarian before you use any unfamiliar materials. As you can see here, I've added separate files for each of these words so I can change their settings individually. Double check your setting for each element and make sure each element of your design is assigned to the correct action, cut, score, or engrave. When you're ready, hit print on the top right hand corner. Close the lid and turn on the Glowforge if you haven't already by using the switch behind it. Make absolutely sure that the filter is turned on before you start printing. The on switch is on the filter's right side near the bottom. Finally, when you're all ready to go, press the big glowing button. You'll need to stay near the Glowforge while your print runs to make sure nothing goes wrong. Make sure you wait for the Glowforge to cool down and filter any remaining fumes before opening, then remove all cutting material from the Glowforge. Any large pieces of cutting material can be stored above the Glowforge. Smaller pieces can be stored in the scrap box. Look at this to see the difference between cut, score, and engrave. There is one more important skill to learn when using the Glowforge, the trace function. I drew these bats for a Halloween display, and now I want to cut their shapes out of cardboard. I placed my drawing in the Glowforge, then turned it on to use the internal camera. I've already hit create new design on the Glowforge dashboard. Now I'm going to click the teal plus sign at the top of my screen and select trace. Now I drag the mouse to draw a box around what I want to trace, and then I click on the empty white space to tell the Glowforge that's where I want it to cut. That looks good, so I'm going to click place artwork in the top right hand corner. Now it's been translated into a cut path for the Glowforge and I can place it on my cutting material. Since cardboard is our preferred drafting material, I'll use that. But in order to get the settings right, I need to measure the height of my material. I'll get that measurement in inches by using the digital calipers. Being precise is very important. I'll then enter the material height into my print setup before continuing. Avoid tape or labels on the cardboard you used and weigh it down to make it flat if necessary. Looks like 0 0.07 inches for this sheet. We have recommended settings to use for cardboard, but paper is flammable, so watch while it cuts. In case something does ignite, call for a librarian immediately, unplug the Glowforge, and use the fire blanket if necessary. Let's review a few things. The Glowforge can cut, score, or engrave. It can trace images with clear dark lines. And when uploading, use an SVG or a PDF. Put away large pieces of material. Save usable scrap in the labeled bin. Cardboard is our preferred drafting material. And consult with a librarian when using unfamiliar or non-standard materials. Most importantly, don't be afraid to ask for help. Always turn on the filter before you start a print. In case of fire, call a librarian, unplug the Glowforge, and put out the fire. Don't lift the lid until the fumes have all been filtered. That's it. Happy making, lions.